Have you ever tried the fill tools of TubeTube? Well, it's time for painting or animation projects, so let's use them. Hi, this is Gustav, the developer of TubeTube. Welcome to our channel. In this video, I want to share with you some tips about how to deal with the painting process of your animations, understanding the current limitations of the fill tools. Of course, we are working on enhancing these features to make things easier for you. But while we get there, let's talk about a handy method to paint your animations without losing your mind. So let's start. The first point you have to be aware of is that the field tool is still under development. I'm pretty sure that some of you have tried to draw a shape using several lines and then have tried to paint the inner area using the field tool. As you can notice, the result is very awkward. So if you are planning to create your animation projects using TubiTube, how to deal with this problem? Well, let's take a look at my procedure. Select a layer only to sketch the scene you want to animate. In this layer, use all the strokes you need to define the elements for your animation. In case you are planning to use several layers to compose your scene, then try to use one layer for sketching per every layer you are expecting to paint. Note, the sketch layer always must be placed over his corresponding layer for coloring, and don't forget that you can swap the layers order anytime you want to. Once you have set the layers you want to use for your scene, then start drawing all the frames you have in mind, using every sketch layer for its corresponding content. After finishing all the illustration process, now we have to deal with the coloring part, the main reason I decided to make this video. So at this point, we have to paint every one of the empty coloring layers using the sketch layers as a reference. Based on the current limitation of the color fill tool, we will have to focus on create close shapes to cover all the elements of our illustrations per every frame. The painting process starts by selecting the border and the fill color from the color palette for each element. Remember to start painting always in order, from the bigger components at the back and moving forward to the front. Note: Use the selection tool to handle the level of the objects you are creating so you can move them back and forward depending on your needs. For the coloring process, you can use any of the drawing tools depending on your taste, the pencil, the ink, the polyline, or even the line. Note. In any case, don't forget to use the Notes tool to fix the shapes you're drawing in case you need any adjustment. By the way, the Line tool works pretty well in combination with the Notes tool to create complex shapes, getting a nice result. But how? First, pick the Line tool and then click all the corners of the shape you want to trace just following its contour until close the whole pad. Then, use the right click to finish the line. After that, pick the notes tool and adjust all the curves by using the notes at every corner to fix the close shape you want to paint, like in this example. Another interesting resource that I want you to try is the transparency parameter from the color palette. With this feature, you will be able to create shadow effects to complement your objects, giving a nice appearance of depth and volume to your elements. Usually, I use black or white colors to create shadows. Then, I set the transparency value to achieve the effect. Finally, I just have to draw the shape of the shadow and that's it.
Okay, it's time to make a cool exercise using my painting approach. So let's do it. First, I'm going to sketch all the frames of my animation in the layer number 2. Second, I'm going to paint all the objects at every frame following the technique described previously and using the first layer. In fact, I will use all the available drawing tools to ensure that my objects will be formed by closed paths to make all the painting process an easy task. And finally, I will add some shadow effects to the objects of my scene to make it more interesting. So what do you think? Ok, I want to enhance my scene. Let's add a static background. I can't help it, I always have to do this. Now, we have a final version of my exercise. What about now? Do you like it? I hope so. If you are planning to develop your animation projects using the traditional frame-by-frame -frame approach, 
I recommend you to use the procedure described in this video. In that way, you will achieve cool results without facing frustration and avoiding a lot of extra work. In any case, if you try your own exercise following this technique, please share them with us, we would love to watch them. Now it's the moment for greetings to some of our community members. In this occasion I want to say hi to Rick Medlin, Ultimate Duck, Anthony Barton and Radio Bimo. Thank you for your comments. Finally, I want to invite to all the members of our community to visit our store. There you will find interesting resources about animation that can make you enhance your skills or simply give you a funny time. Remember that every time you buy one of our products, you are supporting the development of Doof, which means new releases, better performance and more features. Ok, that's all for now, thank you for watching. Please like this video, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one!